The pocket gopher. Classified under the order Rodentia, known by many as pests, are widely spread throughout North and Central America with over 40 different species. These burrowing furballs have often been a blight to farmers, gardeners, and of course, golf course greenskeepers. But what if I told you that gophers actually play an incredibly important role in the environment and may in fact be the first non-human mammal to be observed practicing farming. Before we get to the farming, let's learn a little bit about them. These potato-sized rodents get their name from their large cheeks, which form pockets, allowing them to temporarily store and transport their food. They also have some wicked incisors, you know, the big teeth up front, which they use for cutting through thick roots. They can also seal those big cheeks and use their teeth like a shovel or pickaxe to break through the tough dirt. Like most rodents, these incisors just keep growing, so all of this hard work keeps that growth in check by wearing them down. Another interesting fact is that gophers are typically solitary creatures, except in cases where it's time to get down and dirty. And in this case, we're not talking about the actual dirt. Mothers will care for their babies for a few weeks before kicking them to the curb to set out in the world and go for it to forge their own destinies. Typically living only a few years, gophers have many natural predators. Weasels, ferrets, and other predators will invade their tunnels to hunt them out. When gophers do choose to venture out of their underground homes, they're faced with aerial attacks from birds of prey such as hawks and eagles. While the life can be harsh, the gopher is very prolific, meaning they are quick to make more of themselves and keep the population thriving. Most gopher species are doing quite well, however, there are a few species that are classified as endangered. As I mentioned earlier, the main activity that gophers are known for are digging extensive tunnel systems about a foot below the surface. These tunnels are where the gophers spend the majority of their lives, so they have to be big. In fact, tunnel systems have been measured up to 200 yards. For reference, that's as long as two football fields. So does all of this tunneling ruin the soil and kill the plants like our green-thumbed human friends have suggested? Well, yes and no. While this activity can be devastating to human farming and plant cultivation, there are actually a ton of benefits for the soil and environment. Gopher tunnels help to aerate or break up and bring oxygen to the soil. This can help with heavily compacted soil from grazing animals like cows and bison or heavy equipment from human activity. Their fecal matter, aka their poops, help fertilize the soil while digging helps to bring necessary minerals to the plant's roots growing near the surface. Some studies have even shown that plants growing near gopher tunnels are hardier and grow more vigorously than their neighboring plants. This is what we would call a symbiotic relationship, meaning both the plants and gophers are benefiting from each other's existence. Which leads me to the question, are gophers the first non-human mammals to farm? Some research points to this being true, at least depending on your definition of farming. Humans have practiced various levels of intensity when it comes to agriculture. From modern day farming, where nearly all variables are controlled, to early techniques, which was essentially just tending to plants and encouraging them to grow and thrive by adjusting the environment to the best of our abilities. A 2022 study out of the University of Florida led by biologists Jack Putz and Veronica Selden suggests that the southeastern pocket gophers may be practicing a form of farming. These researchers dug trenches through parts of the gophers' tunnel systems and blocked them with drums to isolate the gophers to only part of their tunnels. Once blocked off, they used cameras designed for inspecting sewer pipes to observe the root growth and activity. The roots in the blocked off portion quickly overgrew the tunnels, but what was observed in the active tunnels was astonishing. The gophers didn't just eat all of the roots, but carefully pruned them back, leaving enough plant material to grow back. It was observed that this selective harvesting allowed the gophers to meet most of their caloric needs while also encouraging the plants to regrow through stimulating a stress response. Combined with their sweet, sweet fertilizer, these plants grew strong and both the gophers and plants thrived. So are our little friends farmers? I guess that's up to your definition of farming. They are certainly showing some serious restraint by not eating the entire plant and destroying their food source, whether instinctive or just as a learned behavior. Next time someone's complaining about gophers, remember how beneficial they can be for the environment and that even something as simple as a burrowing rodent can be more than meets the eye. If you enjoyed this, 
give me a sub or follow. I'll be doing more videos on burrowing rodents and surrounding the spirit of the brand I'm building. Go for it. Inspiring and empowering people to chase their dreams. Let's go for it.